Hey everyone, I'm going to be covering another near-death experience video. This one's with a doctor, Dr. Alexander the Great. Actually, he's not the Great, but I just thought I'd throw that in there for some reason, because I'm a bit silly. So this is, uh, this video is covered by, protected by fair use for educational purposes only. Um, I'm not making a profit. This is not for profit. It's for educational purposes only. I'll be breaking into this, giving my ideas, my thoughts, my analysis, and criticism wherever it applies. And that's what this is about. If you don't want that, if you're on the wrong channel, you can go watch this video and complete uninterrupted without my narration and you can just take the whole thing at face value, whatever he says, and uh, just believe it all. And not think about what it means or anything else. But that's not really the point of what we're doing here. We're trying to do he something here more than just say, there's life after death. We got that already. A long time ago. You get what I'm saying? We understand that. We're going a little bit deeper than, oh, when we die, we live on. Okay? That's uh, first grade. We're a little bit further along than that. So... Let's jump into it. The brain was uh, shut down. There's something called the Glasgow Coma Scale that you use to measure coma. Anybody in this room would score a 15. That means they're doing great. If you're a corpse, you get a 3. Anything below 9 is deep coma. And uh, for the vast majority of that week in coma, I was around a 6 or 7, sometimes as low as a 5. So I was in deep coma the whole time. They had CT and MRI scan data showing that all eight lobes of my brain were affected. No part was spared. And that's why to have an extraordinarily rich experience, far more real than anything I'd ever experienced in my life, completely violates everything I thought I knew about brain mind. Because you need a conscious brain to experience. But no, you don't. The brain is a filter. Its main function is actually to restrict consciousness down to this tiny little illusion of kind of self and non-self, you know, all the stuff out there, and a here and now. But uh, so much of that is really a fiction. Jump in here right where they pause. I hit it perfectly. So that worked out. But uh, he's actually telling the truth there. He was totally wrong. He's one of the rare doctors or scientists that can, he didn't say that he was wrong, but in, in not so many words, he admitted to it in a sense. I wish he would have just said I was completely wrong and just come right out with it. But anyways, uh, what he thought was totally incorrect. And what we see is actually what's true. You know, the people that most doctors and scientists mock all the time, what we see is actually true. Where the brain's not creating that and it's not hallucinating, you can have zero brain activity in all of your lobes of your brain and still have these rich, deep experiences because your brain's actually, as he said, a filter. I call it a governor. It restricts your abilities. It restricts your consciousness. Okay, it's just like the U-Haul truck can only go 55 miles per hour down the, the highway. Would the engine actually be capable of making that truck go faster? Yes but they put a governor on it, so the accelerator pedal won't go down. You can't pr push it past 55. It just stops at 55, so you can't speed with it. Um, that's what's been done to us, okay? That's what's been done to us in these human bodies with these human brains. Um, if we didn't have that governor, we'd be able to... Okay, the way I put it is... Uh, the speed of thought, which is quicker than the speed of light, all right? And uh, some people find it hilarious when I pause and think for a second or, or forget what I'm going to say, but hey, you try making a video for 50 minutes or all the videos I've done in the last month, and that's the comment, that's the nitpicking comments with the laughter to tears and, you know, saying when I paused and so funny when I paused and forgot what I was going to say and you know, there was silence on the video or whatever, and it's like, dude, I mean, you, you're laughing at me and thinking you're clever, but you haven't written a, a clever comment yet on my channel. Like, I'm being patient with you, waiting for one. If you don't come up with one, you're going to be gone. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that. Think. Try to think a little bit. 
And if you say you can think, well, why don't you show it in your, in your comments? Why don't you show it? So anyway, we've been restricted by design on purpose. So what this guy says there is correct. And it's unusual to hear that coming from a doctor or anyone with a scientific background. Because usually what they say is the brain creates everything. The brain activity, you know, your neurons, your synapses, all that shit. And the brain matter. And that's where they think that's where all your memories are stored. They can't find them and everything else. So um, he's pretty accurate in what he says there, which is pretty interesting for a doctor to be saying something that's actually true for once. You step over from this world into the next. What happened? Well, for me, that journey began in a very primitive, coarse, unresponsive realm. It was like being in dirty jello. I called it the earthworm's eye view. Uh, and I was there for a very long period of time. I'm sure I didn't have any kind of memory formation moment to moment. So it seemed to last forever. But the good news is it didn't. I was rescued by this slowly spinning pure white light with fine silvery and golden tendrils. And as it came towards me, I realized it came with a perfect musical melody. Not music heard with the ears, because in those realms, our awareness goes far beyond the limitations of physical eyes and ears and a physical brain. But the good news is that beautiful spinning white light up and up and opened up into a brilliant ultra real realm that I call the Gateway Valley. And that was filled with many Earth-like features. It was uh, a, a world of perfection, perfection and ideals. ideals. There was no, no death, death or decay, decay. anywhere. Uh, beautiful, lush plant life. Okay, I'm going to pause it here for a second, or for a minute, sorry. It might be longer than a second. Don't panic, some of you. Okay, so what he's saying is interesting, but it's, it's, it's uh, revealing too, because he's speaking about music, all right? And hearing music, but do every near-death experiencer, do they all experience hearing music without ears? in their spiritual, quote, body, if you want to call it that, which really isn't a body, as we know a body to be. No, they don't. They don't all hear music or get transported by the light and hear this m music that's like a melody and beautiful and different than music here. So that's unusual. Why? And my question is, why isn't heaven the same? If we all, quote, go to heaven when we pass away, why is, quote, heaven so different for each one of us? There are differences. People keep trying to look for all the similarities. Sometimes I notice the differences, and they're different. His experience is different from other near-death experiences. These are clues. This isn't meant to upset you, hearing that it's different. Then he goes to this beautiful realm that he says is kind of Earth-like. Well, why would that be the case if you're in an immaterial place? Why would there be landscapes and trees and you know water and, and all these different things uh, that you see on the screen nature that kind of mimics here why would that be flowers buds on trees blossoms colors beyond the rainbow i was a speck of awareness on a butterfly wing among millions of butterflies looping and spiraling in vast formations above this this uh, gateway valley and in that valley were thousands of beings dancing, lots of joy and merriment. And when I wrote it all up weeks later, I said these were souls. I knew they were souls between lives and that there was this incredible joy and merriment going on. It was all being fueled because up above were these swooping orbs, pure uh, spiritual orbs of divine energy. These, uh... I have to jump in here because uh, for one thing, why would... How does he know those were souls? How does, he, how does he know those weren't just fake, like holograms, like AI projections or something? They're set up to deceive him. And what about these orbs? How does he know they're divine based on what is feeling? You know, those could be entities. Those could be part of the matrix. That's what it seems like to me. You can call me suspicious. You can call me whatever. You know, some douchebags will probably laugh or do whatever. Do whatever, but um, 
some of you that just laugh this stuff off, I mean, I hate to laugh, but you're going to get recycled, dude. You don't have a clue what's coming for you. You don't have a clue. If you're just laughing at this stuff, you're going to get a big surprise. So in the end, you're really not going to be laughing too much at that stuff. But hey, you know, I realize there's zombies. Somehow, sometimes zombies end up on my channel where some of them would be better suited at the channels that it really aren't uh, this high level. Go over to Quantum of Con Men or something. Which, which I came to call angelic choirs when I had to put a, a label on them. But it was the anthems and chants and hymns that would thunder down from this beautiful chorus of angels above that was fueling this incredible festivity of sparkling waterfalls into crystal blue pools and all of this joy and merriment, and children playing and dogs jumping, so incredible your, your, happiness. Your senses are heightened and not contained and not Correct. confined. You gotta remember our brain and our, our, our uh, eyes and ears, they give us a very kind of uh, diluted down version of, of reality compared to that. There it's like drinking through a fire hose, an incredible uh, ocean of this uh, loving awareness. And for me, in that beautiful gateway valley realm on the wing of that butterfly, uh, my first awareness of the divine was a sense of a divine wind or a, uh, the breath of God, as I called it in some of my early writings, that blew through. And it was amazing because even though the elements of the scene stayed the same, all of a sudden I realized the incredible power of that divine force, of that uh, cause of force of an infinitely loving God. Uh, not a judging. Okay, just a second. God, one of infinite love, of being home, of our spiritual essence, of the purity of our being. Here's where I wanted to jump in. An infinitely loving God felt the breath of God, the divinity, all that stuff there. What's he doing back here? That's my big question, and that's the one a lot of people don't like. They don't like that hearing that asked. Your death experiencers don't like it. They don't like thinking about it. They don't like being back here. The vast, vast majority, it's in, it's, I would estimate it's well into the upper 90%, maybe 97, 98, 99%. Don't want to be back here. So if it's, if it's an infinitely loving God, why wouldn't it just let you stay there? What's the harm? Why, why do you have to come back here to this fucking place to suffer? Or to at least watch suffering, if you have any awareness. And some would say, well, he's a doctor, but it doesn't matter. They tune out so much. I mean, they don't look at what this realm is. They don't look at the massive suffering of so many here and ask themselves, what's the point? What's the point of all this suffering here? And a lot of you in the comments will only look at your own suffering. You're still not even close yet. Still not close yet. You'll just talk about your own suffering if you have a toothache or this or that. You, you're not looking at the whole realm. You're not even close. I hate to break it to you, but you're not even close, okay? With, with comfort that really goes beyond any so, words. So you felt comforted. And that's why- You so, felt at peace. Absolutely, and that is such a beautiful lesson that comes not just from my near-death experience, but from near-death experiences yeah. across all cultures, all nations, going back several thousand years, the stories are always of this beautiful peace, like we are home. Mm. This incredible joy and oneness and that God force of pure, infinite love is so healing. Uh, the good news is you don't need a near-death experience to know this. It turns out that it didn't all happen in that gateway of Wow. That in fact the music from those angelic choirs provided portals to higher and higher levels, all the way out to the core. And the core was infinite uh, inky blackness, but filled to overflowing with that God force of love. And all in the setting of the entire material universe and lower spiritual realms having been shrunk down to this complex oversphere that was there as a source of, of, of lessons and teaching. Uh, lessons and teaching. Well, what are you doing back here, dude? Talk about the physical or material universe. What are you talking about? 
That's where it gets a little bit tricky for some people. And it's unfortunate. I feel for some people. Some people don't get it. Maybe better. Maybe I should just say to them, better luck next lifetime. Like I think some of the, I'm not sure what kind of Buddhist it is, whether it's Zen Buddhist or another type, say better luck next lifetime. Maybe that's what I should say. I don't know what to say to them, but some of them are just not catching on at all in this lifetime. Even when they're shown and they have uh, near-death experience analysis videos to watch, which are relatively new. I mean, they, <laughs> they haven't been around forever. So if I were you personally, I would use the opportunity, but some people are not like that. So But in that realm was this incredible oneness uh, with the divine, a sense that our very conscious awareness is directly connected. There's no separation between us and that God force. Of course, the God force is the pure love, yes. with absolute uh, unconditional love for all of creation. I wasn't alone. Mm. There was a beautiful young woman uh, beside me on the butterfly wing, and she never spoke a word. She Okay, wait a second. That beautiful love and all that stuff, that godly, unconditional love, where is it on earth? Where is it here? And also, he said about oneness earlier, when he was talking about that place, oneness. Now he's talking about being on a butterfly wing with a girl. Huh. But she's separate from him. So they really aren't one. It's just a word that's become popular and they keep using it. Are you one or are you two? Are you an individual or are you one? Because what you seem to be describing is you still are yourself in a separate body, separate spirit body, separate being. And she's different from you. So you're not one. There isn't oneness. You just contradicted yourself right there. If you see what I'm saying. She didn't have to. She was dressed in the very same simple garb and yet beautiful colors of all those thousands of beings dancing down below and she looked at me with her sparkling blue eyes and high cheekbones a broad smile soft brown hair framing her beautiful face with a look a look of infinite love and that to me was uh, the essence of the journey and i think the most important thing for me to bring back was how her awareness came into my mind and of course it wasn't his words when it happened but when i just want to jump in here when he started describing her face and her broad smile and her beautiful what was it blue eyes or whatever and her hair and everything and how she looked at him with infinite love i thought it was going to be you know cue the 1970s porn music like boom chicka bow wow or something i mean it was like dude you know settle down is it is this going to go into like the erotic realm or something like you know doctor who or dr alexander just uh Settle down a bit, you know, dude. You know, don't be a, don't be a perv or a creepy boy. Start telling us about, you know, having sex in the afterlife or what, I don't know where he was going with that, but I got I, well, maybe I just imagined that, but I mean, it was just like, what the hell? Anyway, back to the video. That was a, that was my comedic relief break. Put it all to words weeks later and writing it all up the message was very simple and the thing is i knew her so well from her her uh, mental emotional connection with me in my mind and yet i realized and this was especially haunting in the in the months after my coma when i started reading thousands of near-death experiences and saw that there was always a guardian angel who was somebody very crucial in your life yeah i just want to break in for a second um from a profile view with the bow tie, I just want to make a comment. This is not Bill Nye, the science guy, that fraud that really isn't a scientist and pushes uh, global warming, which is a fraud, fake, pushes the fake spinning plastic, plastic ball, the uh, toy, plastic toy globe model, which is fake. That's not him. Um, this, is, this is a different guy, but I mean, he, he looks a little bit similar to him. You know, I don't know if you can notice a little bit of a resemblance, but sorry, I had to I had to comment on that. I just couldn't resist. And 
I remembered her so perfectly that I knew I'd never met her in my life. You know, that was the, the beautiful discovery four months uh, after my coma. And of course, there's that beautiful picture. That's exactly. So, so <laughs> you didn't know who this was? No. You had I no had no idea. So and it, it, turned, it has to do with the fact that I, I had met my uh, birth family about a year before my coma. But the reality is they were still suffering from the loss of, of that, uh, that daughter. And so they didn't really want to talk about her too much. And, uh, uh, you know, what they did share was what a beautiful, angelic, loving soul that she was. Um, and, of course, I, I was quite sad as a brother who never got to meet her in this world. And that's why when my uh, birth sister, Kathy, um, she finally sent me a picture. And I received that picture about four months after my coma. And it, it turns, turns out it was very important that, that at the same time, because I, I think I needed some, some opening in my awareness and in my mindset, at the same time I was reading a beautiful story in Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's book, uh, Life After Death. And in that she tells a story of a 13-year-old girl who had a, uh, you know, was in coma, very sick medically. Uh, and in this beautiful journey, she was welcomed to the heavenly realm by her brother. Mm. And he was uh, demonstrating to her that power of unconditional love and the beauty of, that, uh, of God in that realm. And then helped her make a decision to come back to this world. And when she did... Oh, God. Helped her make a decision to come back to this world? To suffer here, but he gave her unconditional love? Do you see how that lets their guard down? When you think it's your brother, or your relative, or your deceased loved one? And then they convince you... Like, I mean, it's sick. This matrix is freaking sick, man. It's fucking sick. It really is. It's so sick. He used her brother or the image, what appeared to be her brother, against her. More than likely, her brother was back here whenever he passed away and re recycled, reincarnated. So it wasn't him. It was an imposter, to put it that way. She was talking to her father about it. She said, but I don't understand. I don't have a brother. And he said, well, you did. But he died three months before you were born, so we never told you about it. And that's when I looked up at the picture that I just received the afternoon before, and I collapsed on the ground. And my heart pounds, and I, I can't, even now, every time I, I revisit this story, chills running up and down my spine. It's the beauty of that recognition uh, of that guardian angel. And all of a sudden, I realized we were deeply connected. Uh, and in fact, it's like she was looking at me in the picture that you showed a few minutes ago, as if to say, do you finally get it? Yeah. Well, yes, Betsy, I finally get it. Not to sound mean, I'm not trying to be mean here, but doctor, you really don't get it. Got a little piece of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little piece of the jigsaw puzzle, or a few pieces put together, but you definitely don't get it. You don't have all of it, all right? I'm not saying that to be mean or to be cruel if you end up watching this video, and which does happen sometimes. Sometimes I, I am able to reach these people and get them here to see it. Um, and that's what I try to do. Hope you do watch this, but and I, and I wish the best for you. I, I'm sorry for the jokes. That's just my style. This is a serious topic. It's hard for a lot of us to deal with. We know what this place is. We never want to come back here again. So it's like you have these beautiful memories of that place, but look where you are here. You get what I'm saying? Look around here, doctor. Look around here. Look where you are here, man. Right here. I could show you things right where I live, you know. Walk around here at night sometime, you know. I could show you some stuff. But um, look around here. What's the point of this? What's the point of you coming back here? What's the point of us coming here at all? And please don't say we were all overjoyed to come here. It was an adventure and we wanted to forget and it's a game and all the Dolores canon. It's just like you've been brainwashed and programmed, just like computers, and you're all coming saying the same script. Whether it's Bashar, 
Dolores Cannon. It's like over and over again. Do you not even see the pattern there? When a whole bunch of people are saying the exact same thing, like it's scripted, then it's fishy. All right? It should be automatically fishy for most people at that point. Well, the doctors had estimated early in the week that I had about a 10% chance of living through it. After seven days in coma, um, with uh, you know just a horrible uh, medical picture in terms of prognosis, uh, they predicted that had gone down to a 2% chance of survival. But in that medical conference they held that Sunday morning, they recommended to the family stopping the antibiotics. And the reason for that is they thought there was no chance for my recovery. So. When I did actually open my eyes on that Sunday morning, they were shocked. Uh, I didn't, my brain was so completely savaged by this experience, I had no idea who these beings were standing at my bedside. My sisters, my sons, uh, my former spouse, my mother, I didn't know who they were. All I remembered was where I'd been, this incredibly rich journey. I also had, for about 36 hours after I, I came back to life and they pulled out the breathing tube, I was kind of in and out of a crazy, paranoid, delusional ICU psychosis, a nightmare, uh, back and forth in that world. But the memories from deep coma in many ways were far more real, vibrant, and alive uh, than any of the rest of it. And that paranoid, delusional nightmare, those memories faded within about a week. The memories from the deep coma experience are as fresh today as if they happened yesterday. Oh, goodness. What a wonderful experience, though, to have a breathing tube and be in a coma for seven days and your family to think that you're gone, that you're never coming back, and open your eyes and not recognize them. I mean, God's plan is just wonderful, man. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's remarkable. It's, remar it's magnificent. It's remarkable. I hate to make fun. I'm not making fun of him or his suffering. I'm just making fun of the whole, quote, God's plan thing. If you get if you get my humor, I hate to have to explain it, but goddamn, on YouTube, there's always people that, you know, it's just so tedious. You know, if you don't have a sense of humor, just leave my channel, please, because there's, there's going to be humor even in even in these videos once in a while. Once in a while, I'm in the mood to do this, and if you can't take it or don't like it, you don't like humor, you know, you're one of these quote truthers that thinks there's no place for humor. Just move along. Just move along because uh, it's remarkable. God's plan is just remarkable, isn't it? The breathing tube. Have you ever seen a breathing tube put down someone or a drainage tube? Put place down so, uh, they, the drainage tube, they go through the nose, the nostril. They force that, you know, uh, through my mom's nostril in the hospital where she died. So I saw that. I saw, I saw a lot of things. God's plan is just wonderful, isn't it? If you lie to yourself, if you're like most of you, you know, if you're like me and you're honest in looking at it with honest eyes and an honest mind and an honest heart, an honest heart, as Chiron would say, an honest heart. You know, people eat that shit up. Maybe I should start doing that more. I'd, you know, might energize people or all of a sudden there'd be thousands on my channel. I don't know. You like the guru talk? Is that what humans love for the most part? But uh, yeah, the suffering here, the breathing tube, that's real fun stuff. People really enjoy having a breathing tube, I've heard, in hospitals. Coma for a week. His family thinking he had a 1% or 2% chance that he was never going to come out of it. And he comes out of it, he doesn't recognize them. What a beautiful, remarkable experience. That's God's plan, isn't it? Well, it'd have to be, wouldn't it? You can't cherry pick. If you say this is all God's plan, which a lot of religious people say, then don't cherry pick. It's all God's plan. When you see horrible shit, it's God's plan. Some consistency people, my people. You know, when millions and millions of people start sharing these stories, yes. there is no doubt yes. of the eternity of soul and the, and the reality of this God. Nope. You're wrong there. You drew the wrong conclusion. A.B. Truther, you're saying, oh, there's no doubt. Okay, life lives on. 
You got that part right. But God, where'd you get that from? There is doubt about that. There's major doubt. You just don't have any. But others do. Because we're looking at this realm. We're not just thinking of the beauty over there. We're looking at what we're experiencing here. And also, he just said that there's millions that have experienced this, which is true. But they have one thing in common. They're all back here. They're all back here again in hell realm. So where's the unconditional love from God to send them back here? Doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. And uh, for the people that don't like my style in doing these videos, move along. Just move along, you know. So that's it. That's it for the good old doctor, Dr. Alexander. And uh, they get, that, that's the thing. They, it's a powerful experience. I understand that. I understand it. I understand the peaceful feeling and all that kind of stuff. But they're stopping short. It's a marathon to realize what's going on here. And they're running the first maybe three steps to 300 feet. I'll give them that. They ran 300 feet. But a marathon's like 26 miles. So you stopped a bit short. You get what I'm saying? Truth is a journey. Don't stop short. Or you're not going to see it all. See, they get so excited that there's life after death. And as a doctor, I don't think he believed in it. He just thought the brain, that's it. The brain creates all this. Your brain, if you go brain dead, you're done. And that's it. That's what they believe. So they're so overjoyed. They're all excited and stuff like that, that they're, they're living on, you know still alive and they get to experience these beautiful places but they shut off their critical thinking they shut off their critical mind they didn't analyze this stuff they didn't say to themselves well, what am i doing back here again back here to suffer for what if that was a loving place with an all loving unconditional love from a loving creator god whatever what the fuck are you doing back here for man for what for what purpose Come here to suffer when you could be living there in, in peace and bliss and beauty and love? What are you here for? What are you here for? You're in paradise and you come back to a sewer? Really? That adds up to you? Got to start thinking. And I'm including some on my channel. If you're new, that's fine. That's great. And I hope you do learn and I hope you're curious and you start thinking about this stuff you watch the videos but you also think about it but if you're smart ass smart ass about this stuff you're not going to last too much longer and you're probably going to get recycled that's your big reward for for being a total fool here think about it some of you haven't left a good comment yet not one not one think you deserve out of here I know it scared some people. Some people have said they hope they die before I do because they know I'm serious about sealing this place over. And I'm not trying to scare you by that. I'm, I think that the, when the matrix is ended, that the good spirits the, are eternal, they'll live on. They have nothing to worry about. But you, the ones that are the bad ones and, and not taking any of this stuff that I'm putting work into seriously at all, that are on team evil and defending evil, you might be in trouble. You might be in trouble. So think of it that way. I'm not even kidding. You might be in trouble.